Welcome to MarcusG.TV. I'm Chef Marcus Giuliano. I'm a chef on a mission. Today's mission is running. Found a great article on Huffington Post. 10 running tips from real people who have mastered it. Um, if you've seen any of my past videos of last year and the year before, I had a lot of running videos in the past. I haven't done much running this year. Um, I kind of feel like I'm slacking off. I had a an injury earlier in the year that sidelined me. I did the first, like... <sighs> I did 100 straight days beginning of the year, and man, uh, 60 of those days were with plantar fasciitis, extremely painful. Ran a marathon on plantar fasciitis back in April and uh, in May when I completed my 100th day in a row, or so whenever I completed my 100th day in a row, um, I was just totally shot and discouraged and injured and didn't want to run. And I might complete, gee, I think I'm on track right now for maybe a fat 950 miles this year, 850 miles this year. I'm not about that. I got to double check my Strava. If you're a runner, get on Strava. Strava is a really cool app. You can track your results, measure against your friends, other people, and join challenges. It's very motivational. Once I started measuring my, um, my performance uh, was when I started improving my performance. So, uh, let's see, 10 steps, uh, 10 running tips from real runners, from real people who've mastered Huffington Post. Number one, don't put so much pressure on yourself. Just because someone else can run a 5K in what seems like a matter of minutes doesn't mean that you have to be the same way. Tons of runners put pressure on themselves. I know some runners that won't even run a race because they're like, I'm not at my peak performance. I'm not at my peak level. I'm not gonna go out and run and embarrass myself. And honestly, it's just about going out there and doing it. A lot of people talk themselves out of doing it because they're not, they don't feel that they're a good runner to begin with. Like, I would never go, you know, embarrass myself at a race. I've never really run a race before and this and that. I got to tell you, it's about going to just run the experience, having the social experience and just saying, hey, I did it. You know, the thing that people need to remember is a mile's a mile, two miles, two miles. When you tell somebody, oh, I ran a mile, I ran 10 miles, last thing they're one of the last things they're going to do is ask well how long did it take you they're not going to criticize you for taking longer than it took somebody else um you know hey i ran 10 miles that's the bottom line and uh, i had a good time i ran five miles i ran a race that's the, you know that's the bottom line so don't let that don't let that discourage you at all um number two find ways to make your run exciting this is like really, really beneficial. I live near the trails here in upstate New York, and I gotta tell you, I love hitting the trails. I love taking my parents' border collie with me. I don't have a dog, but taking a dog with me really helps, uh, you know, breaks it up to be able to sit down on a rock and have a dog just like lick you and everything is really cool. Um, I've grown up with a dog, so the dogs know me, so it's not like I'm just borrowing a strange dog. Uh, but going with people, taking pictures, uh, posting photos on Instagram, getting on the trails, um, getting into new new places you haven't ran before. For me, it's boring to run through the same area over and over again. So make your runs exciting. When I was little, when I was little, when my son was little, when my son was eight, nine years old, seven years old, we used to take the football out with us, and we used to run around town, and we used to throw the football, and one person would run, sprint ahead, and catch the ball, right? Then another person would run ahead. So we were kind of doing intervals while we're doing a 5K run town, and it would make our run more interesting. So find ways to do that. Uh, number three, invest in good running shoes. That is so important, running shoes. But more important than running shoes is your stance. It's your approach. I, I've always bought really good running shoes, but in the past, I'd run three, 400 miles on the shoes. The shoes would be shot. Now I can run on those same shoes. I can run seven, 800 miles before I have to change shoes because I've altered my stance. Super important. The better you strike, you know, you're striking on your fours and your mid of your foot and your fours instead of your heels, instead of heel striking, you're going to save yourself injury. You're going to save yourself shoes. It's going to be more enjoyable. Picture a boxer in the ring or somebody somebody that's jump roping, right? Somebody that's jump roping sitting there. You, they wouldn't be jump roping landing on their heels every time, right? That would hurt. It would be massively painful. You would say jump roping's, jump roping's, people would say jump roping's not good. Jump roping causes injuries. Um, but when you see people jump rope and you see boxers in the ring, they're light on their toes, they're dancing, they're prancing. When you're in that kind of a mode, in that kind of a form, 
it allows your body to do what it's supposed to do. It allows your Achilles tendon to be that shock absorber that no other species has out there. So live it up to the Achilles tendon. You know, let the Achilles tendon do its work. So running right is super important. Now, some people buy really good running shoes. They buy supports. They buy all these fancy things. They buy these big drops, you know, con con concaves, contours inside, and they never learn how to run right. So they start running a bad form. They start running uh, and they're running themselves into an injury. So what I like to do is I like to use the five fingers, those barefoot shoes, the five fingers, the Vibram five fingers. And I like to, you know, brush my runs up with those once or twice or three or four times a month, put them on, go out, do one, two, three, four, five, six, eight, ten miles on those. And what that does is it makes sure that I'm properly striking. Because if you don't properly strike a nose, you will feel it and it will hurt. So it won't allow you to run wrong. The problem with a lot of running shoes is they allow you to run wrong and you never catch a mistake. So make sure you get on YouTube, watch some videos out there on how to run right. A lot of people think, well, I don't need a lesson on running. I don't need a lesson on walking. And you know what? We get lessons for golf, skiing, tennis. We get all these lessons for things. Watching a video on how to run properly would really help the average runner. I've seen a lot of runners run just totally wrong. I was doing it wrong for years too. And I probably... Um, I can probably even brush up and and probably improve my stance here and there, right? But I'm conscious, and that's the thing. Be conscious, be conscious about that. Uh, number five, stick with it for a few weeks. Some people just get out there and they just give up right away and they say, this isn't for me, this isn't for me. It's about progress and tracking your progress. That's why you want to join Strava, join RunKeeper, join Nike Run, whatever the Nike app is. Get, join an app um, where you can where you can monitor yourself. And it's going to tell you, and Strava's awesome, because Strava tells you, hey, you just beat your PR, personal record. You have a PR for XYZ run, which might be this run on the street or this loop or whatever, because you've done that run a couple times. So that's really cool to focus on on improving. Don't focus on what other people are doing. That's the last thing you want to do is focus on what other people are doing. Focus on what you're doing personally. Uh, number six. Focus on breathing. Super, super important. Running requires deeper inhalations and exhaustion, exhalations. Um, so I was out riding my bike a few years ago. Just got my road bike. And I'm out there riding with these guys. And they look at me. They go, you must be a runner. I'm like, yeah. They're like, man, because you got good breath. And you got the stamina. And you're just, you know, you're going up these hills with us. And for not being a person who's, who's ridden bikes in a long time, you're doing really good. I'm they're like, we're jealous of runners. We're honestly jealous of runners, some of the cyclists were telling me. You know, to run or to breathe properly, you know, put your hands on your on your side and, and hold your diaphragm. And when you're breathing in, make sure you're pushing out and getting air down. Don't 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 breathe through your lungs, breathe through your stomach. Through your stomach's right. Fill your stomach cavity with air. And if you have to, stop while you're running and take some breaths. Take some breaths, and uh, when you start, take some deep breaths and get some air going, get some air flowing. Maybe run in place a little bit before you start a race or warm up a little bit and get that air going. Now, speaking of warm-ups, I'm not the kind of guy who likes to stretch. I really don't stretch at all. There's two theories on the stretching. Um, stretching needs to be done properly. If you do overstretch, you kind of want your muscles in that elasticity mode, right? You want to be reactive when you're running. And some people overstretch. So the muscles have lost the elasticity, okay? You want that elasticity and that reactiveness, so don't overstretch. Um, here's a big one. Find what you're looking for? Dry. Dry. Okay. You Dry. Double check. Yep, stainless steel Chardonnay. It's a stainless Chardonnay. Okay. So, so it's it might get a little bit of oak, but it's... It's it, more dry than oaky? Yeah, it's good dry. It's okay. not... It's, it's dry. Okay. Uh, number seven. I'm at work right now, so... Uh, Talia's selling some wine, getting some, needs a wine description. Um, if you don't know, I, I own a restaurant, so I'm in my office right now. But these are my running trophies back here, right up here. Those are my running trophies, some of my culinary knives over here, a lot of my running books and health books and cookbooks back here. So let's see, number seven, walk intermittently. This is the one thing that people just can't get in their mind. They're like, well, I can't walk at all if I'm a runner, I just can't walk wrong there's some really good training programs out there that include walking as part of the training program even marathon runners some marathon runners will walk they'll run for 10 minutes and they'll walk a minute or they'll run a mile and they'll walk a minute 
There's just all kinds of theories out there that do this. I've seen people that have done this and it helps your body recover. And once you teach your body how to recover, you can go longer. It's all about recovery mode, okay? Um, when I do ultra marathons or running in the mountains here, we're doing runs, um, a lot of us walk the, the steep uphills or brisk hike the steep uphills because it's not worth exerting all that energy to get up these 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 trails or up these hills, especially here. We're in one of the hilliest parts. We're in a very hilly part here in New York. So uh, walking, don't be don't be ashamed of walking. You want to, if you're if you're if you're really monitoring your time and you're in a marathon and you're running like a four hour marathon and you want to try to walk, like I said, that one theory, ten minutes, one minute, ten minutes, one minute, you'll probably actually improve that four hour time to like 350, 345. People claim that they can shave off 10% or more based upon this recovery method of running, walking, running, walking. So don't be ashamed to walk at all. Number eight, set a realistic plan and go for it. Uh, do you want to be able to run a 5K? Do you want to be able to run a mile without stopping? Find an objective and stick with it. Don't all of a sudden just go out and register for like a, uh, a triathlon when you have no experience. Um, even though Rich Roll, if you read Rich Roll's book, uh, Finding Ultra, he did sort of something similar to that. He started running and uh, and registered for something that was out of his league that he ended up training up to. But people aren't like that. Rich Roll's a really good book, really good book. Finding Ultra, very motivational, alcoholic, overweight, attorney, overworked, 40 years old, all of a sudden changes his life, and two, three years later, be called, it's called Time Magazine's uh, top 25 athletes in the world. Yeah, really amazing story. Rich Roll, R-O-L-L. -L. He has a podcast. Check it out. Uh, number nine, listen to a killer playlist. Man, music really helps. Music really, really helps. Lots of great songs to get you motivated. One of my favorite trail running songs is uh, from Kid Rock, um, Born to be Free. I think that's the name of it or something, but it's just, it just, it puts you in the mood. Whenever I'm running with people on the trails, when I play that song first, it puts everybody in the mood. You're out there on the trails, there's mountains, there's the forest. It's just everybody gets in the mood. So get a killer playlist. Um, I particularly don't like running with headphones on, and a lot of people run with headphones on. They run with headphones on, they can't hear what's going out, out around them. So I take my phone, stick it in, a, in my sleeve, a pocket, or a regular pocket, and I play it on the speaker and I can hear my music and I can hear the surroundings. If there's a car, if there's a dog, some people stick those headphones on and they're not sure of their surroundings. That could be very dangerous, especially with cars. And in races, some races don't allow people to wear headphones. It's, it's frowned upon because you want to be able to hear what's going on around you. You could create a hazard and trip yourself up or trip others up. Number 10, embrace your slow pace. <sighs> You know what? Just go out there, like I said, a mile's a mile. Nobody's going to judge you if you're doing a 12-minute mile versus a 9-minute mile versus a 7-minute mile. A mile's a mile, and that's what you have to keep in your mind. Um, I like elevations. I like hills. So for me, I'm like, hey, how can I get some more elevation on this? And once you start adding elevation, you slow your pace way down because, it's like I said, somebody tells you got to walk or go or hike up briskly up these things. The bottom line is, you're going out to do a mile. You're going out to do five miles. Focus on that, the distance. That's it. No matter if you're walking, no matter, I mean, I was out there running with plantar fasciitis, and I gotta tell you, um, it was it was brutal. The plantar fasciitis was brutal, and I would go out there some days at a 13 minute mile pace, and two months before I had it, I was out there at a 7.30 pace, right? So just, just Get, get that out of your mind. Embrace the mileage. So uh, those are 10 tips from um, real people who've mastered running. Uh, from the Huffington Post, great article. Uh, post some of your personal stories below about running. I'd like to hear those. Leave that in the comment section. I'm Chef Marcus Giuliano. Thanks for watching. If you like my videos, please hit like, subscribe to my channel, and definitely pass it on.